the Arizona Signal Watcher DXing video blog. Episode 2, Super Loop Antenna Part 2, Variable Resistance Box. This part of the antenna project actually has more general usage than just for antennas because what I'm going to basically do is build a precise um, decade resistance box. And the goal here is that, is that when I click on the, the push buttons here, that I can dial in a particular resistance and that will be the terminating resistance for the antenna. But of course, if you have any other need for um, having a relatively precise resistance, you can use the same techniques. These are based on these thumb wheel switches. And if we go zoom in on the back here, what you can see is there are numbers from zero to four and five to nine with a common terminal in the center. So we'll have one of these switches for the ones digit, the tens digit, the hundreds digit, and then we're gonna have some extra hundreds uh, because we don't need several thousand ohms, but we do need 13, 1400 ohms for this particular project. The uh, principle behind this is that if you put resistors in series, the resistance adds. And so with a thumb wheel switch, if we put a resistor between zero and one, one and two, two and three, etc. That basically is a chain of resistors in series, and then by using the thumb wheel, we dial in a particular point along that string of resistors. So if you go to three, you're going to have three resistors in series. So if they're one ohm resistors, you have three ohms, which is what the number three will correspond to on the, on the front of the thumb wheel switch. For the resistors, because you need um, fairly high precision resistors for this, it's probably best to go ahead and, and order through one of the major supply houses. I happen to order from DigiKey. There's also other ones like Mouser. You can get some of these components uh, from places like Amazon or eBay. And if you can find uh, components of the appropriate tolerance, that's fine. Um, the one nice thing about ordering from one of these major supply houses is that you can see all of the uh, specs um, for the resistors right there on the website. And that actually was uh, uh, something that uh, kind of caught me here. When I bought the one ohm resistors, I bought them 5% because that's 0.05 ohms. And I want to try to make the, uh, have the resistors uh, not be responsible for a lot of error in the reading on the resistance box. Now, there are other sources uh, that are going to mess that up a little bit, but, but I want, to, want the resistors to not be a major part of that because that's something that's easy to control. However, these particular resistors are rather large. Um, that is one way to get a smaller resistance is to, to make the resistor a little larger. You don't have to, though. But the problem is these resistors were a little bit too large to use on my thumb wheel switches. So I ended up resorting to some resistors I had um, lying around, um, probably 5% also. They were, they were marked as 1%, but I don't think they were 1%. So I ended up using those, just something to be aware of that resistors physically come in different sizes. And you can see there's a big difference here in this size. And these just didn't fit for my project. Now the uh, 10 ohm resistors, I bought those um, as 1% because that'll be 0.1 ohm. And for the 100 ohm resistors, I bought those 0.1% because that'll be 0.1 ohm again. You can buy um, resistors with a smaller tolerance than this, but what happens is there's a point at which there's a big jump in cost going to the next lower tolerance because at some point you start running into difficulties with manufacturing resistors of a certain precision. So you want to check that out carefully when you buy the resistors. There's kind of a sweet spot where uh, you're not paying too much extra for the for the uh, the lower tolerance resistors until you get to a certain point. And so the point one was the sweet spot here for the 100 ohm resistors, which was fine because that's what I that's what I wanted. And now we just need to populate the circuit board with all of our resistors. Now remember the numbering is backwards because we're looking at the back side here. So there's zero to one. one to two and flying into the frame, uh, we finally have eight to nine. So there's our nine resistors, but we do need to do one more thing. We need to have a jumper here from the nine position to the common position. 
and that's to complete the uh, series circuit. And what I recommend you do is that when you're going to solder up these uh, resistors, you're going to snip off uh, the excess wire. And what you can do, if you're careful, as long as you don't have any metal contact any any other metal, you can just use a, uh, one of those uh, scrap pieces of wire just to jump over here from common to nine, and you're good to go. And so now for your viewing pleasure, a time-lapse soldering sequence. Now here's what this looks like completed. So you see my nine resistors, you see the one that's, that's uh, from four to five, and then you also see this little connecting wire. All right, so here's a quick little look at the uh, wiring, the jumper wires. Um, this is the lowest digit, the ones digit, and you see you go from the common of the, one, of the ones digit to the zero of the tens digit, then from the commons of tens to zero on the hundreds, and then commons on the hundreds to zero on the rest of the hundreds. And so those are just little jumper wires soldered in place. These things are snapped together. And uh, because of the way I did this, you add the first two digits. So this should be 1300 add 14 ohms, what I have set right there. And I will put a little, I'll put some little notation on here to make it clear that you add those together just to, just to make it a little more elegant. So just to do a little test here, um, I'm uh, connected across the uh, entire chain of resistors. Uh, this again should be 1316, or sorry, 1314 ohms, and I've got 1316. So um, within two, uh, that could that could vary a little bit depending on which ones, which uh, things I have in the circuit and how many resistors I have in the circuit and all that. Here's, uh, this should be 1366, or 1364, I have 1366. Um, if I go down here, uh, that should be uh, uh, 1266 instead of 1264. Now if I completely take that digit out, um, then I'm down to, let me see, 866 or so. Now I also want to show you something. The 100 ohm digit, uh, I actually had to do a few tries to get that to work out right, and I'll show you what happens. Um, I have the 0.32 at the start, and then we go up to 100.64. Now it's going to go into kilo ohms mode, 200.7, 302, 400.9. Now watch what happens here when I go to 5. What it'll do here, it goes to overload. And so what I think is happening here is that for some reason the switch isn't making proper contact. Now I don't know whether that's a, you know, I don't know really exactly where that problem is. Uh, could be anything. It could very well be a bad switch. Okay, so now we need a box for this. And what I happen to have in my collection that uh, seems like would work is a plastic uh, Hammond 1591 LSGY. I think the GY just means this gray color. Now the other thing I need to do is uh, use banana plugs uh, for my uh, antenna wires and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, this is sort of a normal uh, uh, two-prong uh, banana plug socket the kind that you um, um, use for actually for uh, various electronics maybe for speakers different things like that but I'm going to cut it in half and use one on each side for the connection because it's just one wire coming in and one wire coming out. I measured and cut this slot out here to be the same size as the variable resistor. I'm going to mount it flush with the, uh, with the side of the box. Um, for that, I did the final touch up with a Dremel, but actually I found that cutting Cutting the plastic uh, works work best with this uh, this cheap um, oscillating tool that I have, uh, and that actually works uh, works pretty well on this, and it gives you a nice cleaner, straighter cut for the holes for the banana uh, 
plug socket. Um, your banana may vary, but uh, uh, I found that a 13 64ths bit gave just the perfect hole. And here's a little tip. When you're soldering the connection um, between the resistor and the banana plug socket, uh, if you're careful, you can use your smallest bit, which should be a 1 16th bit, and actually drill a hole inside the tip of this uh, of this uh, of the back end here. Now this will depend on exactly uh, how your socket works, but the idea here is that then you can uh, stick the wire in here and solder solder on that, and that can uh, uh, give you a, a better connection than uh, just trying to solder it directly to the outside. The other thing is you could um, actually solder a, a, a through hole um, perpendicular to the uh, to the threads here and go through that, and that would also work as well. I have the uh, uh, the two sockets, and I still kept this uh, kept the uh, top plastic piece uh, to make a a good snug connection against the outside wall of the box. And on the inside wall, I used um, a locking washer, a regular washer, and a nut, and that provides a that provides a good a good sturdy connection and um, but yet it still could be taken apart. Now uh, the last little bit here and the reason I have this tilted up is because I'm going to um, attach to the bottom here with double-sided tape. Now there are various ways you can do this but one problem with with, uh, with the thumb wheel switches here is you can't really drill into them and so you can't use any kind of a, a screw attachment and um, you could probably make some kind of bracket or, bracket or something. I don't have a 3D printer. Uh, I'm trying to keep this relatively simple. So I'm going to put double-sided tape underneath here. And uh, all I have to do, I'll tape this down and uh, get it arranged properly. And then I'll solder up those wires. And then we'll have the box completed. Now with just the double-sided tape here, this is not uh, terribly secure. So um, because we have this little bit of space here, I'm going to take the piece of takes the piece of plastic I cut out of the box and just a scrap piece of perf board and shim that up and so now with that and with the lid on that's going to be plenty secure enough okay and now let's test out the finished product. I've got my banana plug leads in there and you can see we're measuring the about 866 on the 864 setting, that 2 ohm offset that we saw before. And here we go to about 876, 877. So that looks good. And we go to 886. Excellent all the way down here, 824, and there's our 826. Let's throw a zero into that. Okay, 806. I noticed that it's a little slow responding here. This may be a setting on this, uh, uh, this meter. Um, but there it goes, it's up to about 810, which is what it should be. And this should end up at about 8.02. And it sure does. Let's uh, go down here. <clears throat> there we are at about 3.01. Just for the heck of it, let's go all the way down to zero. And there's our, our two ohms or so of uh, excess resistance from all of the wires. Again, a little bit of that is due to the... Uh, to the probes, but most of that is the in the hookup here. Uh, probably with better quality switches that might be diminished. Let's uh, jump right up to nine. Okay, we're at nine o two, and now let's put in uh, let's put in this one. This should give us this should take us up to the next uh, level here, and it does one thousand one one thousand two. Again, we add the first two digits. 
and so this should be 1100 and 2. Okay, so it looks like uh, this is all working. I just need to put the cover on, uh, maybe make a few little cosmetic, um, uh, do a few cosmetic things, maybe uh, seal up this, this gap here that I created, something like that. But, um, but those are just minor things, and otherwise uh, this is completely functional.